Hello and welcome. I'll start out this video by saying if it's cut a little weird and you see my hands do something weird like that, um, I got a cold and I'm coughing violently. And I, if, if I cough in this video, I'm gonna clip out the sound of it. Um, just so you know. Um, we're gonna use this. This is an old pad of rough watercolor paper I've had lying around for a while. And it was just on top here. The interesting part is in this package that came today. I have been a bad person and been shopping on Amazon again for two things. This is a refill. I am quite crazy about this uh, expression watercolor paper and it's a very reasonable price. So if I'm buying something on Amazon, I buy an extra pad of paper now that I'm at it. It wasn't that I just so totally needed it. So this is the star of the show and that's why we need the good paper. Schmincke's super granulation paints have been out for what a couple of years now and I have been kind of spying on it on other people's channels and stuff. I have to say I'm not a big fan of granulation in watercolors so I haven't really wanted it but I saw somebody swatch this I saw somebody else swatch this set and I saw somebody else again swatch this set and I was like I, I, I gotta have this so I ordered this on on Amazon it's very reasonable price it was to 32 or 34 euros something like that it's not a bad price um, now if I'm totally in love with this I might go and buy the set of, of the big tubes these are the little five milliliter tubes this is a limited edition the other 40 colors um, is now a permanent thing in, in Schmincke's selection of colors but this is a limited edition and I was kind of intrigued by by this so um, not a big fan of granulation so I bought the five milliliter tubes to start with um, there are five colors in here as haze pink haze blue haze indigo haze brown and haze black so let's check them and they they're convenience colors so there's a mixture of pigments in here and uh, that is so small I can't read it I'll put that in the description which pigments are in here I have to look at cute little box I like the painting on here so um, Haze pink, haze black. This black looks like it's somewhat green. Haze blue. And haze indigo and haze brown. Okay. Um, what to do, what to do. I got an empty palette here. I'll squeeze some out in here. So this is the haze brown. Haze pink. Mm. Haze black. Haze blue. I think it's the indigo I'm the most curious about, and it's of course the last one I grab. So 
so yeah, I could have been studying the pigments here and I could have bought the the single pigment version of the pigments used here and mixed them these colors or something similar myself. But there's like a lot of pigment, different pigments in some of these uh, super granulating paints. So um, my thought is that it is actually easier to, um, and I'm sorry about the flicker, it's easier to, to buy the paint as they are. And if I like them, I might have a look, closer look at the, the composition of them. Especially this one, if, if they don't make this a permanent addition to the already 40 colors that is there, then it might be interesting to see what they put in here. So this is the haze brown. It's not very brown, it's kind of very cold brown going towards grey. I'm trying to add some water because it's when it's diluted that you might get some color separation and stuff like that. And that's also because I want to see the granulation is why I picked this paper because granulation shows better on rough paper than smoother types. If I had used hot pressed paper we could maybe not have seen it at all or very little. So haze pink is the next uh, It's kind of a bit of a violet color. Some blue. Oh, this looks like it separates beautiful. This was actually probably the color that sold me a bit on this. Oh, yeah. It separates into pink and blue. I bet the pink is uh, Potter's pink in here. They have used that in, in several of their, their mixtures. So the black. What's up next? Like a greenish gray, maybe. Let's see. Didn't happen so much to the the brown. But the pink. Oh yes. And this one's really nice too. Blue. No, this is kind of a paint gray indigo type of, of color. Just try and charge some water in here. See. The thing about granulating colors is that 
they don't flow all that much because of the granulation. The granulation is because the the grains is a little on the big side. So and the indigo here. It's more blackish than that one. So yeah, I'd say that looks like an indigo and this one more like a paint's grey maybe. But they call it indigo. Hmm. Quite interesting. Play around with the brown a little more. See if there's something I missed. Definitely some interesting colors. And, um, I'm gonna turn off the camera and, and let it dry and let's have a closer look at it when it's fully dried because that's when you see the full effect of the granulation. Okay, so now it is dry and I have a look at the pigments. It wasn't so bad, it was down here and fairly readable. So Three of them has more than two pigments. There are three pigment mixtures and the two first, of course, only two pigments mixed together. So PBR7 is an umber of some description. They're, they got two umbers in their collection in Schmincke, a burned umber and a green umber. And I don't know which one has been used here. I wouldn't mind owning either, so I might buy them. Um, and PBK11 is Mars Black. And that's a mixture of the brown. Um, there isn't so much to say about the brown. It, it does granulate and... Yeah, it separates into those two colors. I think I would maybe have preferred it just to be the, the umber to be honest the the black makes it look a little dirty but let's see I'll, I'll not make up my mind finally just looking at a swatch sample I have to try and paint a little bit and the haste pink as I expected the the red in here is a PR 233 and that is potter's pink and it is mixed with PB36, which is a cobalt green turquoise in their series, so it's a cobalt turquoise blue. And it's separated out very much, um, which is interesting, but uh, the reason why I usually stay away from granulating colors is I, I have a little bit of a hard time figuring out how to use them in an interesting way. The Haze Black has three pigments, PG36, and that was a little bit of a surprise because that is a helio green yellow shade or a thalo blue yellow shade, and that's not granulating. All the others is somewhat granulating, but there was a one, that one green in here that isn't. PBR33 is mahogany brown in Schmincke's Sears, and there's also Mars Black in this one. This one looked more interesting than the brown, to be honest. You can sense that there's more 
different colors in there. The haze blue contains PY43, which is a natural yellow ochre. In, um, if you want to buy it as a single pigment from Schmincke, you have to get their raw umber. That's, uh, that's what they use it in. You can get a yellow ochre that is a mixture of the natural and the synthetic. PY42 is a synthetic yellow ochre. So it's a yellow ochre, uh, ultramarine blue, PB29. And again, one of the umbers mixed in here. That separated out, you can see the yellow coming out here. Um, separating from the ultramarine blue. So the haze indigo is again ultramarine blue and PG26. And PG26 is a uh, cobalt uh, dark green color and PBR 33 is the mahogany brown again so it's somewhat there's some similarities I like the colors and I like how this separates and stuff I, I I'm just a little bit yeah I'm, I'm not sure if I can figure out how to use granulating colors really but let's give it a go. See if I can squeeze things in here. And see if I can paint a, a hazy landscape. Definitely needs a, a bigger mop brush here because this calls for some wet and wet stuff. This paper is old, so I need to use it up. And I could tell that it took the color a little funny. Got some dirt in this brush. But I will. We'll take it all. So this is a 100% cotton paper so it soaks up a lot of water and because I want to do it wet and wet I want it to be nice and wet yeah it soaks in weird that the sizing is is going on this so let's start with the pink I'll probably try and take a little bit of inspiration from the packaging. Get some clouds. The pink here. Yeah, I'm sorry for reaching over here. This is the brown.
So let's talk about this problem with the paper here. It's the sizing that doesn't work as it should. So it absor the paper absorbs the water in a, in a strange way. Um, and you can see it happens on, along the edges of the paper. That's typical for watercolor paper that goes bad. You should store your watercolor paper dry and cool. And um, I can't quite do that. Uh, here in Denmark, the it rains a lot during summer, and that causes the the humidity to go up, and it will affect your watercolor paper. So what to do? Um, it is not something that happens overnight. I probably had this paper for seven or eight years, and I used it not that long ago, um, and it was fine. So it's gone bad over the past six months or so. So all I can say is don't buy seven years worth of paper. Use it. Um, before it goes bad. If you have painted on it and the sizing then goes bad, it won't show really on the on the paper. It's only a problem when you have unused paper then that you then starts to to use. Um, so yeah, that's kinda sad. I'm trying to get all the colors in here a little bit. So I'll let this dry and then we'll continue after that.
so it is all dry. Um, I improved the light a little bit, I hope. Let's take a closer look. So the the swatches did show some of the qualities of the paints, but as per usual, it is the painting that kind of tells the true story. And um, they were really nice to paint with, and the granulation was not overly dominant. You can see it in a nice way in uh, in the wet and wet parts, the background uh, and the middle ground here. How they separated out in a very nice and natural way. And uh, the details I added was it, it didn't flow out and granulate in that in, in a, any unpleasant way. So, so they're really, really interesting and nice to pay, paint with. I do not regret buying them at all. The question is, would I buy the big tube set? And I think not really, to be honest. Um, because I think they are, as I said, mostly novelty colors. And I am not feeling confident that I will... Um, that I'll use them a whole lot. So, as today, mm, not sure. I'll have to paint some more with them. And maybe the, the sad thing about this is I can't find the, the colors individually. The one I probably liked the most was the the pink and uh, and the black was probably the two that I thought was the most interesting. The blue was also quite interesting because it has that yellow ochre in it. I could maybe have wished they called it a green and added a little more green ochre, uh, yellow ochre in there. Um, so, um, yeah, I might have another order coming with more super granulating paints in them. It will take about a week to get here. I, uh, I just confirmed the order and paid for it. And um, that is a order from uh, Gerstegger, which is a European um, art supply dealer. They have a German website and they don't have the same things, but I think they have nearly as many things as uh, Jackson Arts has. And they also have Austrian and French and Belgium websites, at least, that I know of. But I can order from, from the German. They, they ship internationally from, from Germany. Um, it's a little awkward to sh deal with them because because I'm not in Germany, I or make my order and they then send me a quote. I have to wait for them to send me a quote for the shipping. And then I have to accept it and then I have to pay for it. And paying was a little goofy. I paid by PayPal, so that, that was easy enough. But the process of shopping by them is, is not as smooth as I think it could be. I think they could very well replace many's, uh, many people's in J Europe. They're, they're shopping from Jackson, which has sadly been a little more expensive after Brexit. But the stumbling point will definitely be that their website, the, the web shop itself doesn't feel old. But the whole paying process here, we're having to receive an email and then manually go in and, and make the payment. It feels 90-ish from like how we did it 30 years ago. So that shipping shipment is coming in and I got some other things planned. So um, keep an eye on my channel. I sometimes paint and I'm going to paint a lot because I ordered lots of paint. So see you around.